Good evening. Thank you for joining us today. My name is Jennifer Lamis, and I'm the Public Safety Public Information Officer for the Queen Creek Police Department. Today we have Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell and Queen Creek Chief Police Police Chief Randy Bryce providing an update on the Preston Lauren homicide investigation. There will be an opportunity for questions at the end. And I will turn it over to Maricopa County Attorney Rachel Mitchell. I don't want to cover up a microphone. Am I okay here, sound-wise? Everybody okay? Um, good evening, everyone. Today, a grand jury has indicted four people in the murder of Preston Lord. And before I discuss the details of these indictments, let rem me remind you that we are talking about the death of a 16-year-old boy. As I have said in the past, I have spoken with his family, and they are in agony. The loss of a child is unimaginable for most of us, but to live it is a whole new level of horror. I do want to say this. To all of those who have continued to post innumerable, unfounded, ill-informed theories on social media, I hope you will pause and consider and evaluate the effect that you may have had on this family over the past several months. Because now you are about to see the crucial steps of the real legal process at work. This has taken months, but not because no one was working on it. Quite the contrary, and I'll say about more about that in the moment, in a moment. The following people were indicted today. Dominic Turner, William Owen Hines, Talon Renner, T-A-L-A-N, and Talon, T-A-L-Y-N, Vigil or Vigil. Each of them is charged in the alternative with first degree murder, felony murder is, is the theory of the first degree murder, and in the alternative, second degree murder. In addition to that, Dominic Turner is charged with aggravated robbery, each of the four is also charged with kidnapping. Arrest warrants were issued after the grand jury handed up the indictments, and the Queen Creek Police Department made arrests of these defendants. What has happened here today is a massive step forward in the quest for justice for Preston Lord. As you'll recall, Preston was beaten while attending a party on October 28, 2023 and he died two days later in a hospital. Since then, too many people have complained that nothing was happening, and the family heard that. To you, I say directly, you could not have been more wrong. From the night of the incident, the Queen Creek Police Department has spent hundreds of hours piecing together an extremely complex case that involved dozens of potential players, either suspects, witnesses, or other individuals with knowledge. Chief Bryce is here, and he'll talk to you about that more in a moment. From the time my office received the case in late December, likewise, my team has invested hundreds of hours logging and reviewing evidence. You've heard me say before that the police reports numbered in the thousands of pages and that there were more than 600 pieces of video evidence that my prosecutors watched over and over and over. In addition, we asked for an investigative grand jury to review the case. Let me explain the difference between what you probably are familiar with as a traditional grand jury and an investigative grand jury. You are probably familiar with a situation in which a completed investigation is presented to a grand jury. Um, it takes a portion of a day, and the grand jury decides whether or not there is probable cause in that case. An investigative grand jury is different. It can be used to uh, conduct further investigation beyond the police investigation. For example, they can require witnesses to appear in front of them via subpoena. They can subpoena documents and other matters. Now, because of the secret nature of grand jury proceedings, that's as far as I'm going to go. I'm not going to tell you 
what substance was developed in front of the grand jury, and I'm not going to tell you who was called, if anyone, to testify in front of the grand jury. But what I will tell you is this, those take time. Um, earlier in my career, I was involved in a case that where we ran an investigative grand jury, and it took well over a year. So this was done with extraordinary speed. The grand jury has been reviewing this case since February 7th. And then there was another piece of evidence that we absolutely had to have to make this case, and that was the medical examiner's report. That detailed final report was received on February the 14th. And I want to stop and express my appreciation to the Maricopa County Medical Examiner's Office for spending the necessary time to get this exactly right. They undertook a painstaking review, which was so necessary in this particular case. In addition to, to today's indictments, I will remind you of the dozens of other charges we have brought against some of the same defendants, as well as others in the group. And I'm going to give you some updated numbers. Um, these are numbers that do not include the Preston Lord case, to be clear. We have charged 13 adults and 7 juveniles for a total of 20. Uh, the adults have been charged cumulatively with 40 counts, juveniles with 14 counts for a total of 54 charges. This effort on the part of my office and the Queen Creek Police Department as well as the Gilbert and Mesa Police Departments and other partners in the system has been a lengthy, meticulous, and thorough investigation and review. And let me emphasize this, let me be very clear, this investigation and review are not over. Additional charges are possible, but obviously I'm not in a position to discuss those specifically tonight. So with that, I would like to invite Queen Creek Police Chief Randy Bryce to the podium, and then we can address questions you may have after his comments. Uh, thank you, County Attorney Mitchell, for being here, and uh, thank you to the press uh, and the media for being here to uh, listen to kind of the culmination of a lot of effort and all the things that we've uh, done up to this point to really go back to that focus of getting uh, justice for Preston. And the county attorney uh, did a great job of covering a lot of the detail that uh, has brought us to this point, so I won't belabor that, but I want to remind you, as she said, this was a Herculean effort on the on the part of the police department. Um, as as many have said in, in media and social media is that we're a brand new department, we're so young, but I will um, echo with the things that have been said about us and um, say it again is that we have a very experienced staff that is um, more than capable of handling these types of investigations and they've done a wonderful job. I cannot say enough about my staff. They put in countless hours. Um, blood, sweat, and tears to get to this point, and I'm very proud of what they've done. But as County Attorney Mitchell has said, we're not done. We have more to do. These four indictments are just the start, and we're going to continue to work to finish up this case and bring a, a, a whole conclusion to what we're doing. Um, I would like to also say to the Maricopa County Medical Examiner, we appreciate so much the, the effort and the speed to which they provided that. I know a lot of the conversation started about that this is taking too long and the frustration that was um, expressed through various means, uh, not only about our investigation, the, the Maricopa County Attorney, but the other ancillary services that helped us with this. And I would echo what has been said is this has been extremely fast in the scheme of how these investigations go. Homicides take a long time to investigate. And as the County Attorney said already, it was complex because of the, um, the amount of people that we had to and talk to and work with and, and to gather all the evidence that we needed. And it did culminate in hundreds and hundreds of pages, as she said, thousands. And she's correct. Um, but again, I'd like to say thank you to my staff and everything that they've done so far. As you know, we did submit in late December, um, but we are very proud to say that the Maricopa County Attorney's Office done a wonderful job of expediting what they needed to do, but to make sure that they got to the point where they were comfortable, they reviewed everything, and they did a, a, an extraordinarily wonderful job to get us to this point where we're just stepping off to the next step. And I think that was well said, is we're not done. This is just the first step into a long process. Um, I would also like to 
say to the family, uh, we thank you for your patience. We thank you for your support. Uh, the family has been uh, at our side and helping us throughout this. And I too um, are frustrated by some of the things that they've had to endure as we have gone through this process, some of the things that they've seen, but they have been um, undaunted and have been helped us throughout this. And I, I appreciate that. As, as was said, we received the warrants this uh, early, or late this morning, early afternoon, and we started an operation, uh, well, days ago to uh, provide the surveillance that we need to um, get the routines uh, so that when we went to do the apprehensions that we were prepared. Uh, but as you know, uh, we have to constantly um, adapt and change as we go through these operations. But it was a very um, good operation today. We were able to take th that many into custody. Again, we still have more to do. But I'd like to say thanks to the teams that were out there and some of the other agencies that have helped us um, at, to get to this point and some of the assistance we received today. Um, we, again, will have more to come, but um, I'd like to say again thank you to the public as well for all the stuff that you've provided us, all the help and assistance. and. Uh, you know, we continue to get tips, even though we've been to this point, we continue to process those things, but uh, we will be vigilant in, in finishing up this case, but I'd like to say thank you to them as well. But uh, we'd ask that we continue to be focused on what's important and not, uh, as the county attorney said, be careful about some of the allegations and, and uh, uh, theories that are, are put forward. So this is all about making sure that we get justice for Preston and to close out that chapter in, in the lives of this family. And then moving forward, and we've talked about this numerous times, is to make sure that we are setting up our community and the communities around here with the proper tools and means to make sure that we can handle and manage teen violence and really get to the root of what the problem is. So thank you. And um, I think we'll take questions at this point. So yes, all four are in custody. Um, I don't have the exact ages on top of my head, but we have, uh, let's see, there is two adults, sorry, three juveniles and one adult right now. Police submitted charges against seven individuals in December. Today you announced the indictment of four. Can you give an update on the remaining three? I'll just simply say that the investigation, as I said, is ongoing. Uh, we're not done yet. And today we were out at um, one Gilbert home where Queen Creek Police seemed to be um, executing a, a search warrant or looking for an individual. The name that was being read over the loudspeaker is not one of the named individuals that you announced today. Are you still actively looking for suspects to arrest today? So as County Attorney mentioned, we are actively still working the case. And um, I, while I'm not going to comment on the name that was being announced, yes, we are still working on actively to uh, make arrests. Can you say if everyone that you've announced today is being charged as an adult? Yes. Yes, they're all being charged, as I said earlier, as an adult. The community is outside. Can you tell us if more arrests are coming and expected? I know you said the investigation is ongoing. So, so again, we... Uh, we don't get too, into the, too many to the details, but um, we will continue to move forward to make sure that we uh, manage and, and all of the different uh, things that we submitted already and make sure that we have the evidence necessary to move forward. Is there a message you want to put out to individuals that you're currently looking for? Well, <laughs> so I think the county attorney has said it well, is that uh, we are going to be relentless about this and we're not going to stop until we have everybody in custody. Uh, but I don't want to go into too much detail because obviously uh, it, when we do these kind of apprehensions uh, and even today we had people interfering with our, our process and uh, making it difficult for us to actually conduct our surveillance and, um, and make the apprehension. So I don't want to provide any more detail that's going to put my officers at risk. We know that there's been an investigation into the Gilbert Goons. You mentioned some of these individuals have been arrested in other cases. Where is that investigation at? Can we expect other charges related to that? Well, uh, what I would say is that up to this point, or with the information up to this point, was presented to the grand jury. But again, if any additional information becomes relevant, we will present that um, as appropriate. But uh, this is an ongoing investigation. Chief, you've said in the past that um, you ran into maybe a, an obstacle when parents were actively refusing to let their children participate in this investigation. Maybe either of you can take this. Do you anticipate that parents in this investigation could face charges moving forward? 
So I, I will say that we are looking at all aspects of this investigation to see if there are any charges that we could bring against people that have either uh, tampered with witnesses or uh, obstruction. We're certainly looking at a lot of those things. Uh, I'm not going to comment on the specifics at this point because it's still an investigation. Final, you kind of talked about uh, the medical examiner's report and then um, I think, you know, this grand jury process, but what was the final piece of the puzzle that allowed you guys to be here today? Well, I'll speak to my side and I think the county attorney will definitely talk about, um, you know, we work collaboratively through this process and once we submit the charges, there's a real synergy in the way that we put this case together. And so they're looking at it from a prosecutorial aspect while I'm looking at it from initially a probable cause, but trying to get to the end result of actually finding who was involved in each one of these things. So when we got to a certain point, this is where that, that synergy really comes to um, uh, to the peak and we're able to actually get she you know her office can tell me some of the things they'd like to see we can work on those things and we can fine-tune the investigation so I won't say there was just one thing this there was a lot of things that were had to be in place and as she's uh, County Attorney Mitchell has already said is that the medical examiner's report was really a key piece now it wasn't the only thing but it was a key piece because the medical examiner determines the cause of death or excuse me the manner of death uh, cause of death later to be determined during trial but um, she can talk more about that any details of uh, anything they said or any reaction so um, I'm not going to get into the specifics just because uh, again a lot of the individuals that we have have their Fifth Amendment rights and we're not going to necessarily get into some of the statements when that stuff comes to light when as we release in uh, our investigation we'll certainly provide that we just got an update that Chief Solberg and Gilbert would be giving an update here in just about an hour does that have any ties to this case uh, I can't speak exactly to what uh, uh, Chief Solberg might be talking about. We are definitely a collaborative um, uh, group of chiefs that talk and try to make sure that we're sharing information. So I was on the phone with him today, uh, keeping him up to date on what we were doing. So I, we do, while we don't have a direct link necessarily to his investigations, as the county attorney has said already, there's a lot of crossover in individuals that either know each other or are involved in our case and their cases. While again, I can't say this enough is while I understand that the Gilbert Goons and that that moniker is 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 a real point of part of what we're seeing out here and a, an important piece of that. Our focus was specifically on the individuals involved in, in Preston's death. So that was our focus. While again, we collaborated with the other chiefs, um, we remained focused on our investigation and did not necessarily have direct ties to those investigations. Sorry, do any of the outstanding suspects, are any of them wanted on the same charges, including first degree murder? I'm not gonna address that right now. With an investigative grand jury, you know, I think a lot of people in the community are probably learning about that process. So if I'm understanding this correctly, you guys could potentially go to them with, with more evidence and they could review that as this case continues. Is that correct? Uh, that, that's correct. I mean, uh, the grand jury actually, if there is an investigative grand jury, conducts the investigation in, in a very real sense, in the sense that they can call witnesses, they can subpoena records. Um, so if that becomes necessary, we, we always have that tool available to us. Were the suspects today taken in without incident? Uh, yes, uh, there were no injuries, no, um, uh, well, you know, we're always very cognizant of safety and everything that we do. Um, nobody was injured and everybody's taken into custody without uh, significant problems. All right. Okay. Thank you guys. Thank you. Thank you for being here. Thank you.